It's time to start the service this morning. Lord bless all of you. Would there be any special request for prayer? Sister? Let us remember that need in prayer. Sister? Let us remember that need. Someone else? Let us remember Brother George Wells. Let us remember that need. Someone else. All right. Let us remember a little coat. Sister? All right. Brother Tony? Let us remember them needs in prayer. Someone else? Any unspoken request? Let us remember Brother David Jackson in prayer. Let us all stand. Brother Paul, would you come up? Take these needs before the Lord and pray over the service. I believe he's more than able to meet all our needs. Let's go to him. Our Heavenly Father, what a privilege we have to come before you with our needs, to present them before your throne of mercy, and we acknowledge that you have everything already in your control and we commit these needs lord to each for each and every one into thy hands and we trust that you will do your great plan and purpose let it be fulfilled in each and every one of our lives and lord we ask your blessings on this service this morning we pray that your will will be done here lord and as we come together as a body of people and worship you and desire to receive from your table, Lord, that which you prepared for us from the foundation of the world. We thank you and praise you for every blessing you bestowed upon us now. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.
go home and I've never been there But I've been told and I know it's so There's a place of many mansions And I was invited long ago Where I am you can be too, and I am homesick to go. Now we just can't imagine all the beauty laid up in store. We'll see on that morning when we step foot on that shore. Oh, the words can't explain the splendor. No, the half is not been told. Ten thousand years is but a day, and we never shall grow. Old. And I've never been home, but I'm homesick to go home. I've been told and I know it's so There's a place of many mansions And I was invited long ago Where I am, you can be too And I am homesick to go How many of you are homesick to go? Praise the Lord. All right, you may be seated. Happy birthday, Sister Martha Coates. And happy birthday, Brother Chandler. Yesterday. Brother Jimmy and Sister Sandy, would you have a song for us? Then... How about Brother Jerry and Sister Charity after that? <coughs> well, I woke up this morning feeling fine I woke up with heaven on my mind I woke up with joy in my soul For I knew that my Lord, He had control I knew I was walking in the light For I'd been on my knees in the night And I prayed till the Lord, He gave a sign Oh, well, I'm feeling almighty fine I've got heaven, it's on my mind Don't you know, I want to go Where the milk and honey flows There's a light that always shines It's down inside this heart of mine I've got heaven, heaven on my mind And now I'm feeling mighty fine Well, I'm walking with Jesus all the time I'm walking and talking as I climb We're traveling a road to the sky Where I know that I'll live when I die He's been telling all about that land and he tells me that everything is brand and he says that a home it will be mine and now I'm feeling mighty fine oh well I'm feeling almighty fine I've got heaven it's on my mind don't you know I want to go There's a light that always shines 
seated. Brother and sister, if you all would come on. Then how about Brother Steve and Sister Elsie after that? I want to thank the Lord for touching Griffin last week. He came home with a rash and we treated it with several different creams. I didn't know what it was and every time we think it was getting better and a new spot would show up. We didn't think I didn't think to pray, um, but finally, I told Jerry. I said, "Let's just go pray for him." And um, I told the Lord if He took care of it, I would testify. And it got better from that day on. So I'm thankful for that. <coughs> oh yes, He is. He, he is, is able, able to do, do anything, anything I ask, and He will. He will see that what I pray will come, come to pass. For I know, I know that He is the great I am. Oh, yes, He is. Yes, He is. He's the God that led His people out of Pharaoh's land. Though they faced the deep blue sea, they crossed it on dry land. He's the God that talked to Moses while upon the mountain. He's the God that turned the rock into a water fountain. Oh, yes, he is. He is able to do anything I ask. And he will. He will see that what I pray will come to pass. For I know, I know that he is the great I am. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's the God who looked beyond my faults and saw my needs. He's the God who saved me from the dark eternity. He's the God who loves us all and Jehovah is his name. He's performing miracles and today he's still the same. Oh yes he is, he is able to do anything I ask. And he will. He will see that what I pray will come to pass. For I know, I know that he is the great I am. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Well, he's the God who looked beyond my faults and saw my needs. He's the God who saved me from the dark eternity. He's the God who loves us all, and Jehovah is his name. He's performing miracles, and today he's still the same. Oh, yes, he is. He is able to do anything I ask. And he will. He will see that what I pray will come to pass. For I know, I know that he is the great I am. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. He is able to do anything I ask. And he will. He will see. What I pray will come to pass, for I know, I know, he is the great I am, oh yes he is, yes he is. Thank you all for that. All right, Brother Steve and Sister Elsie, then how about the Shaws after that? sing a song. You can help us out. 154, Watching You. Thank the Lord that we have an all-seeing eye watching us. He's looking after us, and uh, I'm thankful to the Lord that we have a five-fold ministry. Thankful for our own pastor, assistant pastor, brother Alan, brother Bud. And I tell you, I look at the things that's went on over the years and the boldness they've had to do to take care of us. 
I can only I can't imagine what would go on if they tried to compromise to keep people happy. And all these ones that's left for different reasons, if they were still among us and they was trying to keep them happy, I'd be pretty miserable. And I think all of you would be too. So I praise the Lord. He puts a backbone in the fivefold ministry that stands up and for our benefits, following the will of the Lord. So the Lord's watching us through different things, but He is in total control. And what we don't, what we even don't know, we need He knows. So help us sing this song. <coughs> go Beth. <laughs> <laughs> All along on the road to, to the soul's true abode, there's an eye watching you. Every step that you take, this great eye is the way. There's an eye watching you, watching you, oh, watching you. Every day, mind the course you pursue. Watching you, oh, watching you. There's an all-seeing eye watching you. As you make life's great flight, keep the pathway of life. There's an eye, oh, watching you. Every step. In the path of the pole, there's an eye watching you, watching you, oh, watching you. Every day, mind the course you pursue, watching you, oh, watching you. There's an all-seeing eye watching you. Fix your mind on the goal, that sweet home of the soul. There's a mind watching you. Never turn from the way to the kingdom of day. There's an eye watching you. Oh, watching you. Oh, watching you. There's a day that the thoughts you pursue. Watching you, oh, watching you, there's an all-seeing eye watching you. All along on the road to the soul's true abode, there's an eye watching you. Every step that you take, this great eye is away, there's an eye watching you. Watching you, oh, watching you. Every day, mind the course to pursue. Watching you, oh, watching you. There's an all see eye watching you. Adams and Sister Jamie in prayer. All right, get the shawls that have come on. Then how about Brother David and Sister Tina after that?
smile with a song and a smile for Jesus is there all the time when my spirit is low and there's nowhere to go I can have this assurance today drive there in places whatever I'm facing my God will never change and he's the rock that I stand on the arm that I lean on Jesus is friend of mine when no one seems to care he will be there he's always close by my side when I'm left alone Feel all hope is gone, I can kneel down and call on his name. I know what he'll do, he's faithful and true, my God will never change. Old Satan still tries with all of his might to stop me from running this race. But I can still shout, for I know with no doubt I'm saved and I'm kept by God's grace. I'm holding His hand, I'm trusting His plan, for He promised He'd come back someday. I'm believing on Him, on His word depend, my God will never change. For He's the rock that I stand on, the arm that I lean on, Jesus is friend of mine. When no one seems to care, He will be there, He's always close by my side. When I'm left alone, and feel all hope is gone, I kneel down and call on His name. I know what He'll do. He's faithful and true, my God will never change. For He's the rock that I stand on, the arm that I lean on. Jesus is friend of mine. When no one seems to care, He will be there. He's always close by my side. When I'm left alone, feel all hope is gone. I called on next come and sing brother David and sister Tina <laughs> and sister Melody how about you after that <laughs> as I travel through this pilgrim land there, there is, is a friend who walks with me Leads me safely through the sinking sand. It is the Christ of Calvary. This would be my prayer, dear Lord, each day to help me do the best I can. For I need thy light to guide me day and night. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Jesus. Jesus, hold my hand, I need thee every hour. Through this pilgrim land, protect me by thy power. Hear my feeble plea, O oh Lord, look down on me. When I kneel in prayer, I you there, blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Let me travel in the light divine that I may see the blessed way. Keep me that I may be holy, thine and sing redemption song someday. I will be 
be a soldier brave and true and ever firmly take a stand. As I onward go and daily meet the foe, blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Jesus, hold my hand. I need thee every hour. Through this pilgrim land, protect me by thy saving power. Hear my feeble plea, O Lord, look down on me. When I kneel in prayer, I know I'll meet you there. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Dim toward the setting of the sun. Lead me safely to a land of rest to buy a crown of life have won. I have put my faith in thee, dear Lord, that I may reach the golden strand. There's no other friend on whom I can depend. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Jesus, hold my hand. I need thee every hour. Through this pilgrim land, protect me by thy saving power. Hear my feeble plea, O Lord. Thank you all for that. All right, Sister Melody. provision for thyself, for I shall inspire thee to go in a moment's notice. And what thou shalt see and what thou shalt experience have heretofore not been experienced in this age. For I desire to lead thee, and I shall show thee, and I shall take thee into a deeper realm that thou hast not been. For the hour is short, and the time is nigh, and I shall use those servants called by my name in a great and marvelous way to show that I am the Lord God Jehovah, and beside me there is none other. Thus saith the Holy Ghost.
Thirty-nine years ago today, the Lord saved my miserable, wretched soul, and I will never forget that day. Tricia, you and Jason, come up here and sing the song with me. I shall not forget the day. I will never forget that day. When I woke up under the noise this morning, and Jimmy and Sandy were, Jimmy and Sandy were singing, I woke up this morning to the bud, and then you come up for me. Thankful that we serve a God that sat beside when He puts all the pieces together, and that each doesn't know the other is being operated. I just appreciate you, Brother Bud. And Brother Alex. I just thank you. And thank the Lord for what He did this morning. Amen. It's never gone out. 
soul is satisfied the flame has flickered but the fire shall never go out it's never gone out it's never gone out no satan has tried many times to make me soul is satisfied the flame has flickered but the fire has never gone out it's never gone out amen praise the lord i will never forget that day I want to thank you all for the anniversary cards you got us and for the gifts that you got us. So we thank you, me and my wife. Thank you. I'll turn us over, over to Brother Allen at this time. good to us whenever we can take care of ourselves he takes care of us let's pray heavenly father we thank you for another day and opportunity that you've given us lord to look unto you and for these testimonials for the songs that have been sang we thank you lord that you're so mindful of us that you don't forget us even, Lord, in our calamities, tra tragedies, everything that comes our way. You still are on the scene. And we thank you for that. We thank you for your mercy toward us. Bless now your people as they've come together. Lord, we pray for the different ones. As Brother Turn Turner mentioned about Brother Adams and Sister Jane, Lord. We pray for them this morning. May you be merciful unto their needs. May, Lord, you just reach down with your kind spirit and touch them. May you, be in this service now, we pray for our brothers and sisters. I pray for Brother Spencer this morning, that, Lord, your hand would be upon him. 
as well as the rest of your ministry, Brother Bud, and all of the brothers, Lord, that are associated with this assembly and with this teaching. Thank you for our brothers. Thank you for our brothers and sisters of every uh, of every country. Lord, we remember them. And Lord, as they look in on the services from South Africa and from Norway, we pray your blessings upon them. Be with them now, Lord. Be with your people now, Lord Jesus, as we would call upon your name. Thank you for your grace now. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Brother Bud. Appreciate God's grace this morning for the opportunity that he has given us to be able to come together again. I try to remember the needs of everyone each day and just uh, pray over the saints of God and Good to see you here today. I I was so glad to see uh, Brother Ron and Sister Joanne back with us. It's so good. To, <laughs> good to have them back in our assembly. To I know that they've gone through a lot of struggles in the last few weeks, but God is faithful. Knowing that God is faithful, we know that whatever we go through, that he is right there with us. Uh, to, not only to help us, but to teach us of his ways. I still on my subject this morning that I've been on. I wasn't, wasn't remembering that this was Brother Bud's 39th year of salvation. I should have had him preach this morning, but I didn't didn't know that because I'm sure that he'd have been inspired to say some things. So may the Lord bless our brother that and I thank God for the privilege of working with him over ten, over ten years. And I never knew anybody more honest than what he is. Because what you see is truly what you get. And that's something for this hour we're living in is faithfulness. Faithfulness not only to one another, but faithfulness to the Lord above all. We can be faithful to one another, but then... Uh, if we're not faithful to the Lord, then all of our faithfulness is just for fleshly gain. But I thank God for His faithfulness. For the truth of His Word that He has been willing to share with us. I have some uh, new scriptures here today that I have... Uh, put on there and uh, uh, some of uh, some of them I'd forgotten that I'd put on there so. but anyway our our day that we're living in is a day that 
has been designated of God. We look at things and people say, well, I don't see how God could stand it. Well, he's the one spoke it. He said how it would be. He said how it would be in the, this day that it was in the days of Noah. And then the days of Lot. So he's not surprised. I am. Thank you, Brother Bud. There's hardly a week goes by by what I'm not surprised with what this nation has come to. And how can we look for uh, for better when worse is happening? All these prophecy preachers preaching the greatest revival is just ahead. Well, it is for Israel. But this nation has already had her chance. The only thing for this nation now is judgment. I saw this man the other day. I don't know who he is. I saw his name at the time, but I, I don't remember who, who he was. But some time back, he was driving and he had a vision, he said. That's his words. He said he had a vision. And in the vision, it said to him, as this nation seeks to divide Israel, God will divide this nation. And he saw an earthquake hit right in the Mississippi Valley. And it's, uh, you know, when if something like that should happen and hit in the Mississippi River, then it would take every bridge out. Then the nation would be divided. East from west. I don't know what's going to happen, but I know that something's going to happen. Because by April the 30th, they're supposed to try to force Israel into compromise. The Kerry's really working on it. To compromise to become, to form a Palestinian state. And one day, I believe somebody gave me the book. I'm trying to remember that a book on eye to eye. It's the happenings that has happened to this nation whenever they try to make Israel give up land. And uh, Katrina happened the day after that President Bush with, with Sharon made them get out of Gush Katish, the Gaza Strip. It happened the next day. Katrina did. And six weeks after that, Sharon went into a coma. And there's a Jewish rabbi that uh, prophesied in, after that uh, this, this all happened and all the, of, of, after that uh, Sharon went into a coma, said whenever he dies, then something's going to happen in Israel. Now we see the blood moon starting up in three weeks. I don't, uh, I don't say that 
when you see the first blood moon that something great is going to happen. But I believe that they're pointing us to a time On the every seventh year, there's something big that happens in Israel. And uh, something happens in this nation and also. Two thousand and one. On a certain Jewish holiday, then this nation, one week after 9-11, then this nation had a stock crash. On the 17th of, of September, seven years later to the day, then... The stock crashed again, the biggest crash in history. The nation lost 777 points in one day. So, at our meeting time in 2015, it's going to be a, another seven years. So, I guess we'll see. Because the last blood moon is supposed to happen. Brother Kurt was the one mentioned that. The last blood moon is, is supposed to happen the day that our meeting is over. 28th of September. So brother, sister, there's something going on. Our, our lives are in... The balance, my life is, your life is, what are we going to do? I'm not talking about getting out here and blazing the world. I'm talking about what are we going to do with our own lives. I mean, I, I see people just like you and I in in Bible times, Old Testament times, when the Great Sage wasn't going on, that made decisions that changed the world. Not only men, but women. That changed the whole Jewish nation from the direction it was going into another direction. Brother, Brother Branham, I always knew these things told on Brother Branham. That I didn't believe, but it troubled me. And right after, right after his death, he, I was standing down at the tabernacle in front of the tabernacle with him in a dream. His brother and his nephew. And he said, what is being told is not true. And that settled it for me. But he said himself, he said, a godly man can never reach the godliness of a, of a sister that's really godly. They can never attain to it. What was he meaning by that? God has given a sister opportunity to live a life above reproach that a man can't touch to. A respect 
that a man can't touch to because when God made woman and when He made a godly woman, it's just something if she kept herself by the way that it was just different. I can remember as a boy that I guess uh, your old country men and different ones has always been a little bit ornery in their talk and things. And I remember standing on the sidewalk at Liberty, Kentucky when I was a little boy and men be standing there chewing their tobacco and spitting off the sidewalk, which don't sound very good. But a woman come by, they say, careful men, what you say, there's, there's a lady coming by. They didn't come by and they'd tip their hat to them. It wasn't, it wasn't a thing of seeing what she looked like. It was a thing of respect. Now then, womanhood has lost that. I'm not talking about sisters. You've still got my respect. But the world today has lost its respect. I think that women on television, that they just say things that is off the cuff, that just, it just comes out of their mouth. And I, and I just think, how dirty, low down has this nation gotten? It still don't affect me toward my sister. It's a day and hour that we've never lived in because the Bible says in the 31st chapter of, of Jeremiah, it's just an inverted verse in there that says there'll be a day when a woman will compass a man. Now these dirty little minds that's got in the Senate and Congress and just the high offices around the world and in this nation. And they're influencing and changing laws. The Constitution is just being tromped on, just stepped on. And you got a bunch of gullible men there that's afraid to say anything because if, a, if you say something in the Senate and in Congress, you know, the first thing that the women do, they cry, and then that, that settles it all if they cry. But one of these days coming, there are going to be a lot of people crying. The Bible says they'll cry for the rocks and mountains to fall on them. To hide us from the face of Him as He comes back. And I don't want to be in that number and I don't intend to be. Because there's a different love. Love is not lust. It's not looking at a woman's physique to see what she looks like. Because the flesh is presented in this day 
as something, instead of something sacred, something awful. And I will say something here that may be a little strange. This is not my message. I just got on this. It will be in the last part of it. But we live in such an hour in a time that This earth is shaking. God just peeling off just layers to get down to the nitty gritty of what man is. This world is not going to be destroyed because of a dirty earth. This world is going to be destroyed because of dirty mankind and womankind. I've not preached this thing, and Brother Bud has not preached this thing any harder than what Brother Branham or Brother Jackson preached it. Look in the archives. Look what it was at the time that they were talking and the time that we are living in now. Brother Branham said this nation is Sodom to the core. Look what it was in 65. But he was looking through eyes that was all, re all way back behind him. Because this was the starting of it. He looked at Elvis. He looked at the Beatles. <laughs> and them, as a beginning, he talked about the Beatles' bangs. Look at, look at it now. You, you see old men, preachers, bald as I am, but they got hair sweeping down their back. Look like a mop wore out. Shame. You look, 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 at, look at how that it happened when men begin to grow long hair. That come from the hippies. The preachers begin to grow long hair. Because they said that was to fit in to make the young people fit in. And then the world began to sing different. It changed from the old time country music I did hear a song some years ago that these two men wrote that it made Nashville mad. Murder on music roll. Other words, 
They murdered country music. It used to be that your family could sit around and listen to something like that old Roy Acuff or somebody like that that could sing a gospel song. Or Hank Williams that wrote songs that we sing now. Because they had some they had some morality about them. But now then, your weird music, if you want to call it that, you see them on television. If you ever turn there, you see them on television. Their hair going down in their face to where you can even tell what they look like except a mop. That's, that's gospel music, they say. To me, it is from hell. Put all this color on their eyes and everything, and there's a man, a medical doctor, went to Israel in the 80s. And he went down in the tomb of Lazarus, of which we have been there. While he was down there, he had a vision. And he had a vision of, of all these devils coming at him and all. And they were singing. And he told that on Christian television in the 80s. He, that here they come singing these weird songs and all with all this pain on their face and everything. And they come right up out of hell. That's why, I, that's why I've said faith assembly will never happen like that. We don't want a bunch, and I get, every week, I get somebody sending me something wanting to come to teach the young people how to sing. You're not going to get that weird old stuff in here. I delete you as soon as I see you. I want something that you can hear the dobro or you can hear the steel guitar still make its moaning sound. That's a sound I like to hear. Don't think you're going to get here with a long guitar beating and beating and beating and your head going up and down like a like one of these things on the dash of a car. <laughs> Bobblehead! <laughs> the church is filled, the church world is filled with bobbleheads today. They come and they go to the go to the cafeteria and they get their breakfast and their coffee and they come out and spill it because they got hangovers from the night before. We will just had a little dram. If you had a little dram, you're a dram drunk. I said, Graham. And I didn't mean it any other way. Come there and put their coffee on their hangers already provided for them. Sit there and eat 
and listen to the listen to the music. And then the preacher gets up with a fifteen minute compromise and message. Brother Bud, I'm glad you said 39 years ago something happened to you that changed you. It will change you. The only time you'll ever get drunk is on the Spirit. That's the best feeling you'll ever have. Don't tell me that it's not real. Devil, don't you tell me that. You're a liar. And the father of it. I don't know where to go from here. Go back to Joshua. I was there Sunday night. Last chapter of of Deuteronomy, Moses died. Here they are. Moses giving Joshua instructions and anointing him for the days to come. And I tell you, Joshua was longing for that day. He wasn't saying, I wish Moses would die so I could take over like some of you preachers done. Here you accuse Brother Bud and me. We just couldn't wait. You are a liar. You lied. You lied to your people. You lied to everybody that you said that to. Even the little one knew better than that. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses Minister saying, Moses, my servant is dead. What what is the next answer of Joshua? You're going a way you've never gone before. They'd only seen the promised land. Moses saw it. He saw it away up on Nebo, as I mentioned last Sunday. He said that his eyes were not dim. He looked all the way up toward the Euphrates. He saw Dan away up here in Syria. He looked away down south into Judah. As you see the desert there, he saw he saw Jordan. The Jordan Valley, he saw Jericho.
God provided him a good bright day. My, if I ever have to leave this thing, I want it to be a bright day. Brother Bud, that I can see the other side. When the lights go out here, I want to see the lights come on on the other side. Because in God there, there is only light. I've heard a testimony of a few men. There's a doctor one time told a testimony of when that he was getting ready to, or that he had been an honorary person. He is operated on because something happened in his stomach. And he put it off because he didn't trust doctors. A doctor didn't trust doctors. And he said that whole night, said he saw himself going through a, a dark tunnel but when he gets to the other side, there's fire. And he said, every time I'd get close to that fire, I'd dig in and I'd be trying to pull myself out. This was a medical doctor. And then the next morning... After he'd clawed his way all night like that, the next morning he saw light come in. God touched him and healed his body because he he said, I'd been hungry. He said, this preacher I knew, he said, I'd spit on him, done everything I could to him. He said, you know who I called? He said, I called that preacher that I'd spit on. Said he said he come and he prayed for me and God save my soul. God's still in the saving business this morning. Moses, my servant is dead. God was taking every doubt out of the heart of Joshua, of what anybody could say, because God had buried Moses. He knew that if they made a big monument on that side of Jordan, they'd never cross. That's just the way that people are. We're not dissuading people from believing in our brothers that have gone on. But we're asking, let's go on. That's the thing that the Branham move could never realize. They could never realize that William Branham was dead. No, they made God out of him. I saw that in a dream one night. 
And in this dream, I saw myself getting away. And the devil was after me. Then, three weeks from that time, I go back to the tabernacle and there is my vision right, or my dream right in front of me. I know if Billy Paul and Joseph should hear this, they would, they would curse me. I'm not talking about curse words, but they would damn me for saying something like that. You never really buried the man. You only put him in the ground. Later on, I had a dream that they had dug him up. And a week after my dream, somebody had dug down in his grave, intending to put a telephone down there. going to call people out from the grave. If you had gone on, you would have had one of the greatest testimonies that could have ever been had. But you didn't like us because we were blackbirds. You say. But I say that we were the little eaglets begin to hatch out. And the great father eagle was up there watching over us. We couldn't stand the cluck of the chickens. We had to go to the one that made the same sound. Jesus has the table spread where the saints of God are fed this morning. Brother Duane, I still like that song. Jesus does have the table spread and we're eating of it. Brother, Brother Bud read this chapter Thursday night, Romans chapter 1. Let me talk to you this morning. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. I'm going to start with what applies to this day. The whole thing applies to this day. Starting verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie 
and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. They worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator. The creature. What is that? Flesh. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Likewise also the men leaving the natural use of a woman burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemingly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which is meat, which is meat which is acceptable to them. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. There are a lot of things that are convenient for us to do. But when we start doing things that are inconvenient, God's going to give us up. He doesn't give this church world up. Being filled with unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers. Backbiters. Haters of God. We never saw anything like it is today. One family can cause that the whole, a whole school can't have a prayer at the end of a session. Because they are atheists or agnostics, or eggheads. <laughs> just a head full of mush. No brains, just mush. You know, it takes a fool to recognize that there is no God. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. The scientists just the last few days have come out with this theory. The earth is 13 and some part billions of years old, which is all right me. But they said that space... There's two little things in space that run together and cause this great explosion. I'd like to know who made space. 
Dummy, you missed something. The space had to be there. That's kind of like a, kind of like a man talking to God. I can do anything to scientists talking to God. I can do anything you can do. God said, "All right, make me a man." He began to take dirt and begin to try to form. He said, "No, no, wait a minute. Make your own dirt." But these, these two little bits come together and made a great explosion. And it went out, went out. No doubt in my mind that whenever the explosion or whatever happened, it took millions of years for it to ever cool down. The surface of this earth could have been millions of years cooling because it was one hot glob. And then Brother Jackson talked about the little microorganisms working on the surface here of this hot molten, molten mess. God created the little microisms, the little bugs, then the little worms that cause secretion. To some way, somehow, after a while, it began to form little particles of the earth. Fool, he said in his heart. It takes a fool not to recognize God. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Get it away. Get it away. I can't stand this. You know why they can't stand it? Because they know there's something out there. It says in the first verses of this, God gave them an opportunity. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are, un, which are not convenient. That's what they're doing today. Go over this again. Being filled with unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness. Maliciousness. Full of envy. Murder. Debate. Deceit. Malignity whispers just like this blade runner in South Africa. Intruder in his bathroom locked in. Why have a trial? One of these days you're Blades will burn with you. You may get out of it here. Just like O.J. did. I, last I heard about him, he's wanting to become a preacher. Was he going to preach on Murder.
backbiters, hater of God, haters of God. Don't mention it. Don't mention Jesus Christ. As soon as you pray in some public place mentioning Jesus Christ, here comes a lawsuit. Yeah, I'm not taking up for the President Obama. I'm not taking up for President Bush. You cause a lot of our troubles. President Clinton, after what he'd done, now then, he's the most per popular person in America, 70-some percent. Why don't they just rewrite the law and get him to run again? They're doing everything else. The laws that are on the book don't mean anything. We'll change them. A couple of men got married in, in Detroit yesterday or last week. After the people had voted down, here come a judge in and said, and he overrode the people's vote. When's somebody going to do something about some of this stuff? You ignorant judges, you. You're not Supreme Court justices. There's no justice in this nation. It's lawless. Lost, lawlessness is running rampant in America today. I didn't come here to hear this stuff. Go someplace else. I, I wouldn't talk like that if I was you. You may lose somebody, not a Christian. Inventors of evil things. There have never been such a thing as the inventions they're making today. I'm getting to something. Inventors of evil things. That's not the car. You can make that car whatever you want to. That's not the gun. The gun was here 400 years ago and it didn't kill people. Guns don't kill. People kill. Won't be very popular about that on the national news. Despiteful, proud, boasters, inventor of evil things, Disobedient to parents. You old man. You old woman. You're just old fogies. If you young people here in faith assembly, you feel like that about your parents, God help you. Because it's without understanding. 
covenant breakers without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. They know it. Whenever they're doing it, they know it. Except the drugs have taken over their minds. <clears throat> their war, their war in Kentucky now over marijuana. Illegal it or don't illegal it. And they claim that it's the most a bit, a thing for a habit of any, any other drug. You're hooked before you know it. Except for one. I'm going to tell you about that one. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. This was only verse that I wrote up there after Thursday night because I told Brother Bud what I was thinking after the service before he even started preaching. I thought, Brother, you are 100% right. One of the most habit-forming things that there is above drugs, we've got it in the houses. It's our computers. Just what are you talking about? I'm talking about pornography. Twenty three seconds after you click on to that, they claim you're hooked. Twenty three seconds. Sixty percent of the church people in America are on pornography. Fifty percent of the preachers in America are hooked on pornography. Young people. Older people, whatever. It is so handy. It is so easy. But what did that last verse I read to you say? They have pleasure in them that do these things. I'm talking today to my brothers and sisters. They claim that eight and nine year old children are already hooked. 
But this one, this one man said, I believe it's four to seven. And I heard a report of someone not in faith assembly, not anybody that you know. They're five and eight year old boys were into this stuff. We're not exempt from the devil, but I tell you, if you ever see anything like that, Turn it off. Get away from it immediately. This is not something to play with. It's not something to fool around with. It is the devil in the first degree. What, what am I saying? I'm saying... Don't care to check sometimes what's going on. This stuff, because one thing leads to another. The Bible says, Romans chapter 12, verse 4. Marriage is honorable and the bed is undefiled. God made that for man and wife. I hate to talk like this, but I had to. Because I see America sliding into hypocrisy and I don't want faith assembly going the same direction today or any of my brothers and sisters. There are places in other nations all you have to do to turn the television on, there it is before you, the television. You shouldn't talk like that. What am I going to do? Just let it ride. I'm saying, faith assembly, there's a red light. A red light that we don't, that it's not. It's something to stop at. Kind of like the man I told this before, kind of like the man that went through the stop sign. The policeman stopped him. He said, well, policeman, I slowed down. He said, that's not the same. It says stop. What difference has it made? I slowed down. If I catch you again, I'm going to give you a ticket. I'll let you go this time. The next day, he comes and he slows down again. And the policeman gives him a ticket this time. Goes back the next day. Here he comes again, the same man. He slows down again. This time, the policeman is mad. He said, well, he said, I slowed down. The policeman pulled out his bitty club. He begins to whack him, whack him, whack him, whack him. He said, do you want me to stop or slow down? You 
You say, well, you're preaching before saints of God. You shouldn't talk like you, that you're talking. I'm trying to get us out of here. I didn't look in your I didn't look in your computer. I don't know what's going on, but I just know the statistics of what they said the sixty percent of of church people are hooked on pornography and fifty percent of preachers. That's not a good number. There's not a person here in faith assembly that I don't want to see you make it. And I'm going to help you if I can. And if it means skinning a little bark, then I'll do it. But you won't go out of faith assembly not knowing what's been preached. Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to the end of this this morning asking for Your mercy toward us. Father, help us, we pray. Guide us, we pray. And lead us in the days to come. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. They say, why did you preach that this morning, Brother Bud? Just preached on that Thursday night. Well, you might call that the one-two punch. Thank you, Brother Ellen, for that message. I appreciate it. Let us all stand. If you have a need and you'd like to come for prayer, then feel free as Brother Chris comes and leads us in a song. and touch the Lord as He goes by. You will find He's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. He is passing by this moment your needs to supply. Reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. Oh, reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. You will find He's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. He is passing by this moment your needs to supply. Reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. Oh, reach out 
and touch the Lord as He goes by. You will find He's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. He is passing by this moment your needs to supply. Reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. Hear my prayer, Lord, oh, Lord, hear my prayer. I know you heard me pray, oh, so many times before. I need you. If you don't come, Lord, I'll perish. Yes, I will. Well, I'm waiting on you, Lord, right down here below. Well, I'm waiting down here at the river when you come, Lord Jesus. Satan don't want me to cross. No, Satan don't want me to cross. Well, I'm waiting down here at the river when you come, Lord Jesus. If you don't come to my rescue, I'll be lost. I'm your child, Lord, and I know I belong to you. I'm your child, Lord, and I know I can't do without you. Oh, but Satan tries so hard to make me doubt you. Yes, he does. Well, I'm so glad I know, so glad I know the truth about you. Well, I'm waiting down here at the river when you come, Lord Jesus. Oh, Satan don't want me to cross. No, Satan don't want me to cross. Well, I'm waiting down here at the river when you come, Lord Jesus. If you don't come to my rescue, I'll be lost. Oh, hear my prayer, Lord. Oh, Lord, hear my prayer. I know you heard me praying, oh, so many times before. And I need you. If you don't come, Lord, I'll perish. Yes, I will. Well, I'm waiting on you, Lord, right down here below. Well, I'm waiting down here at the river when you come, Lord Jesus. Satan don't want me to cross. No, Satan don't want me to cross. Well, I'm waiting down here at the river when you come, Lord Jesus. If you don't come to my rescue, I'll be lost. Well, I'm waiting down here at the river when you come, Lord Jesus. Satan don't want me to cross. No, Satan don't want me to cross. 
Well, I'm waiting down here at the river when you come, Lord Jesus. If you don't come to my rescue, I'll be lost. Praise the Lord. Well, you all have a good afternoon and pray for your brothers and sisters that are standing in need of a touch of the Lord's hand. Brother Turner, will you dismiss us in prayer?